Hello, everybody. It is the me, Game Penguin 21, and we're back, boys. Again, talking about Shadow of the Erd Tree. I'm sorry, it's just been one of those topics. It's just very pervasive as of right now. And I wanted to talk about this video because as soon as I saw the title, oh boy, was this title a banger and a half to really talk about. But we'll get into that. But again, who are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about the man, the myth, the legend himself, Harmon Smith. Now, if you don't know who Harmon Smith is, Harmon Smith is the Nintendo fanboy who will simp over Nintendo stuff for five ever and will continue to do so until he drops dead because he cannot feed himself because of his lack of knowledge on the books. One of the other things that I found really stupid but also funny and interesting is the fact that he also recently released uh, a couple of different... Um, reviews quote unquote that are just ai generated images plastered over ai generated voices that he uses to review specific games games that he obviously has to write himself and games that he just basically didn't play he also tried to you know say that he didn't write this one but that's a thing for another day which i'll probably save on the back burner just in case i need to talk about something else but for right now, let's talk about his most recent video in the ad on the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. Winning Game of the Year will apparently devalue the 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 prestige of the Game Awards. If you don't know what the Game Awards are, um, come out from under that rock. It's very nice out here. But uh, basically, the TGA has been a thing since like a while ago and has been giving out Game of the Year awards and stuff. And you might know them from a couple of different situations where people hopped up on stage and talked shit for about for a little while. But anyway, he is going to propose that Elden Ring winning Game of the Year will devalue it, despite the fact that he's going to give some interesting takes and examples that I think are, again, worth talking about. So without further ado and with no... Uh, and with no restraint here, let's get started and watch this video. I'm curious. It, it seems to be that Elden Ring Shadows of the Earth Tree is going to win the Game Awards at 2024 because nothing else is coming out. Nothing else is, like, really relevant. It's like a repeat of 2016 where, like, they had to give it to uh, uh, The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, of all things, because, like, nothing else had come out that year. So, uh, to me, it's... To be clear here this was also the year that the witcher 3 blood and wine did come out absolutely 110 percent but it also had games like uncharted 4 a thief's end it also had games like persona 3 i think um uh, games like overwatch and inside which were pretty good games as well as pokemon go released that year which was more of a mobile game and stuff like that there was also madden and wwe uh there was also apparently dark souls 3 and battlefield 1 uh and a little small indie game that, like i'm not sure how many people play this but doom 2016 came out literally in 2016 so obviously it was a pretty stacked year for people who like video games in that context so I mean, like, you know, what are you on right now? And can I, can I get some, please? Seems like they're going to do it again with Shadows of the Earth Tree. And to me, that is going to be an indication that, like, uh, the Game Awards are unreliable, that they are biased towards certain properties, and that they're going to do everything in their power to, like, prop up from slop to prop up like the third parties to prop up like a you know all of their like industry buddies while like downplaying all the better games that have come out this year you know i find it funny how he mentions this by the way because sony right in that same tga award which is one of the which is one of the studios that you would think would be in the in crowd because they're like the industry leader and stuff they like walked away with no awards i think this year or, or at least last year when that happened and they also had Two games, mind you, two games, both Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, both of those games, right, were nominated for Game of the Year and both lost to Elden Ring, right? Like, if you're talking about games that have gotten propped up by the TGA and the awards and stuff, Sony definitely has that in, like, definite amounts of spades you want to know why because they also won game of the year with La uh, the last of us part two which became one of the most controversial one of the most awarded games and then has since now been dethroned by elden ring statistically speaking with the amount of awards that elden ring has won so 
if you're talking about propping up specific studios, no. <laughs> like, I find it very, very funny how he says it for, like, Elden Ring and From Software, some of the most criticized game mechanics in the world, by the way, if the, if the pause mechanic uh, debate is still going on in the comment section of that specific video that I released, as well as in the thing in general, don't you think that they would be speaking more highly of From Software and Elden Ring for breaking those norms instead of, like, criticizing the fuck out of it? I mean, like, nothing is above criticism, absolutely, but if they were propping it up, don't you think everyone else would be emulating what, what, what From Software and people like them do? Echoes of Wisdom will be better. Uh, Brothership will be better. You know, there have been like countless examples of this over the the past several years but again I, I think this might be a major turning point when it comes to the game awards because um people noticed that something was up in 2023 right the instant that they decided to shill the last of us hbo over the super mario bros movie you could just tell you could just tell it ended right there, right? Like, even the crowd, like, which was full of game journals and industry plants were just, like, shocked by it. That they would be, like, that they would actually seriously try and prop up uh, The Last of Us over the Super Mario Bros. movie. I mean, that's more of a matter of opinion. I think that the Super Mario Bros. movie definitely does capture a lot of the spirit of the game more than the actual HBO movie, but the HBO, like, series did do a really good job at storytelling and definitely put the uh, game from one thing to another thing. Um, but there were definitely other problems and the reasons why people didn't like that half thing. And I also find it really funny how, again, at the TGA Awards, there was the best movie adaptation that had nothing to do with video games, and it was just video game adaptations of movies. I find that really funny. But... I also find it really funny how this has happened twice, and I mentioned it before, where The Last of Us Part Two won Game of the Year, uh, and everyone got pissed about it, and then The Last of Us TV series won Game of the Year, and everyone got pissed about it. Like, like The Last of Us just can't win anymore. After The Last of Us Part Two kind of blew up and did this whole big controversial change that a lot of people were like, oh, what the fuck is this? And... Like, it just kind of ruined a lot of it, and again, the industry has been kind of going downhill for that. And I would say that for a lot of people, Red Dead Redemption 2 losing out to The Last of Us Part 2, yeah, that's probably more of where I would say the turning point with the TGA Awards becoming more of a joke kind of became from. I, I, like, that's my own thing there. It's very strange. And... I mean, if Shadow of the Earth Tree definitely wins again, I mean, good job for Miyazaki winning two Game of the Year awards from arguably one of his most successful games, definitely deserving of that, because the man spent, like, really good amounts of time into there. And to quote him, he hasn't actually created the perfect RPG for himself yet, and that Elden Ring gets close. And I'm like, that's like looking at your child getting, like, perfect straight A's in, like, most of his classes, but you're still focusing on how in, like, third, like, like you're still focusing on how, like, the year or two before he was getting like straight b's and you're like you can do better it's like that's insane but like very realistic to to like miyazaki's whole plan there i like it i like that keep it humble man you are there's a reason why people praise you anyway and what's going to happen in the future? Like, the Mario movie is going to get a sequel. You know, Nintendo's going to produce The Legend of Zelda. You know, uh, their manga are going to get become more popular. You know, I'm reading Twilight Princess right now, and it is stellar, right? You know, the con the company's going to expand and put out new products. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be killer, right? Welcome to capitalism. This thing is not new to, and only to just Sony. Obviously, Sony and – or the, the Nintendo or the Sony. Like, both of those companies have done that. In fact – if I remember correctly, Halo got a series, like an actual TV series, apart from, say, like, the random Rooster Teeth thing on the internet, which, by the way, rip Rooster Teeth, which sucks. But, like, brah. <laughs> and then you have The Last, Last of Us HBO, which 100% is going to fall off by the time they adapt, like, the, uh, the Last of Us Part Two material. And after that, they're not going to have anywhere to go. You know, like, it was really interesting seeing Normies try to hype up The Last of Us as, like, the greatest video game adaption ever. Because, like, to me, it was really obvious that they were only saying that to, uh, because it was the cool, trendy thing to do. And uh, once it stopped being popular, like, it immediately faded from their memory. Because it had 
they did not enjoy it as an actual product, as an actual story, as an actual show. They enjoyed it as a status symbol. And I mean, I can see that. That's not the worst take out there, actually. That sort of thinking is very weird to me because some people do genuinely like the show. The show itself is fine. It does then, again, capture the actual essence of the show for the most part. But the end-all, be-all problem people tend to have is some of the casting choices. At least, I think, for, like, Ellie and maybe his daughter from the beginning of the series. Though that's, like, more minor things, and it's very strange, the decisions that they made for them. But overall, the story was still really solid. And I do believe that in terms of at least the game itself... Like, the actual video game, the story is fine. Like, it's a story of learning to uh, grow past and, you know, establish a newer family for that. And I, I appreciate those kinds of stories. Uh, but I would say that the video game did a better job of, of, ex of not exploiting, but, like, talking through that situation than the show did. At least, again, from the medium of that it was presented from. That's not to say that the show was bad or anything. But it's just strange, again, how The Last of Us has now become the punching bag right now. And I, I can't disagree and say that, like, they didn't make weird decisions. It makes no sense. And I do think that is, like, the main, the main issue with, like, all of these uh, properties, you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, Warhammer 40K, uh, is that people aren't interested in the brand or the game or, like, the developers. They care about the status associated with them, right? Fucking excuse me? What? The status associated with D&D, &D, Warhammer, and stuff like that? You do realize that up until, like, kind of recently, nerd culture was looked down upon by literally fucking everyone. Including things like video games, arcades, um, fucking D&D... Uh, and Warhammer and stuff. Like, they're still having problems with it. And the thing with Warhammer is that they're trying to, like, change it. And it's really interesting to me that people like Andrew Cavill are like, no, we're going to gatekeep the fuck out of this. Like, you're, you're talking as if you understand that people want the status of it. It's like, people do want status. It's just that it's the hip, trendy thing to be a nerd now. So I don't think that in general people do that. It's more of just those things have become mainstream and hello, grandpa, welcome to the 21st century. But, like, I don't get this point. <laughs> like, the status of D&D, &D, what, like, because you want to be, like, critical role or something? I am confusion. I And... That that is um uh, that is the purpose behind like rigging the game awards the way that uh, the, they have been for since the beginning, right? Like that is why they gave the Baldur's Gate three over the much more popular games like Hogwarts Legacy and the Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. That's why they shield Elden Ring so much. It's why they shield It Takes Two, which nobody remembers anymore, right? Like it's why they shield like The Last of Us Part Two over Animal Crossing: New Horizon. Honestly, like that again, The Last of Us Part Two probably is the only one that I would agree with. Uh, and people do understand why also that they that uh, Hogwarts Legacy wasn't actually nominated for that. Like, there is definitely political uh, tinfoil hat theories that can be crafted from both of those situations, absolutely. But saying that they're doing the same thing for shilling Elden Ring, when, again, to bring up the nominees from that year, they had one remake, I think. They had two games from Sony, one game from um, Nintendo, and, like, I think a remake. Or Alan Wake 2 was the other one. I forget specifically. But literally all those other games, like God of War, Ragnarok, and Elden Ring that year were the only two that people really knew was going to even have a fighting chance because all the other games were pretty much forgotten and, and gone with the wind at that point. So sometimes there is rigging in some cases, but it, it's more of like... It's harder to say specifically, you know what I mean? Because at the same time, I agree that there definitely is some rigging within that sort of situation. And talking about the Game Awards as if they're like this big, massive thing, like, it's not that deep, dude. It is just 
a stupid awards for stupid people sometimes. Don't take it as seriously as, oh, this is happening. It's like, oh, but you took it seriously when Elden Ring did. It's like, yeah, because he did, and I'm using it as a joke situation to be like, hey, you're fucking stupid and wrong at some points. But, yeah. I mean, again, it's it's one of those things where I don't take it too seriously. And if it wins the award, congratulations. If it doesn't win the award, eh, that sucks. You know? It doesn't go much deeper than that, really. It's just video games, dude. You know, it's why they shield Sekiro. You know, it's why they shield, like, again, over and over and over again, we've seen this happen, where the gaming journalism industry, the gaming journalism industry props up some product that nobody cares about. Everybody just calls it Game of the Year for, like, I don't know, like, that period of time it's relevant. And then, like, for, like, three months in Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Baldur's Gate 3's case, uh, for three months, People talking about Baldur's Gate 3, and then, like, the following year comes, and now it's time to get fired about Elden, the Sh uh, Elden Ring Shadow of the Year Tree. The fact that you're still talking about Baldur's Gate 3 kind of shows its, ga its staying power in terms of, like, how it affected you. I don't know what else to say about that situation or about, like, you're talking about this point, but if you're still talking about the thing that has got you fired up to make this video, obviously it's not forgotten about if you see it on the internet. I don't know, Chief. That kind of seems like cope. <laughs> Just a little bit. And I'm not saying I don't like like unpopular or quote-unquote dead games. I love the finals. Fuck you. The finals is great. Go and play it because it's free to play and it's definitely worth playing. And quite honestly, I'm almost done with the... With the season pass, uh, and I still have like a bunch of other stuff to do, but it is, it, it's a game that continuously just is fun to play, you know? And the developers are very nice, and it get, and it's what I want out of the game. If you don't like a game, just don't play it and don't talk about it. You know, let people forget about it. But you keep bringing it up. So I'm going to keep bringing it up too. Oh well. Shadow of the Earth Tree. Right. Meanwhile, people like me, we're still playing Tears of the Kingdom. Right. We're still playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. We're still playing the real Game of the Year winners of um, the past several years. And meanwhile, like uh, those people, people are obsessing over like uh, the the next big thing they can use to weaponize against Nintendo. I love how he, again, this is why I call him the Nintendo fanboy. Notice how all of the, quote, Game of the Year winners are the ones that he uses uh, are all Nintendo games. I just always find that funny whenever he talks, like, down about everything else but Nintendo, despite the fact that Nintendo does have bad business practices. And, you know, they can never do anything wrong, despite the fact that they've taken down emulation and other stuff in very bad acting formats. So, you know, just a maybe... Maybe don't. Maybe don't do that. Just a little bit. Anyway, let's finish out this video. Right? That's what we're seeing here with Elden Ring, is that, like, people want to use it to, to keep attention away from Nintendo products. And in the end, it is going to fail. Like, people are going to get tired of it. They are going to get bored about hearing about from a slap all the time. Like, uh, I'm already seeing more and more that people are starting to notice stereotypes in regards to, like, Souls players. So... I love how he brings that up as if that's not already a thing. Like, seriously, there's been definite stereotypes and stigmas attached to From Souls, to Dark Souls players. Uh, and you'd need no, to look no further than some of the people who literally criticize From Soft games, like yourself. You know, you've definitely used these stereotypes and other quote unquote n knowledge of reactions. It's it's funny to me how he brings this up as if this is new information. Uh, sir, th this is Wendy's, and you're talking about video games. Uh, please either order something or get the fuck out. Now there's again, like... Uh, let's just again finish up this video. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting it. So, I, I do think this is the beginning of the end for From Slop. So, uh, once that happens... Once the, the the Soulsborne formula kind of falls apart, right? Once people realize that, like, Elden Ring isn't that great, like, there will be no recovery. And the gaming journal industry is going to be forced to move on to the next big thing, 
and uh, Nintendo is going to continue growing and becoming bigger and better. And next time, or even now, even like uh, the gaming journalism industry is not going to be doing, not going to be able to do anything to downplay their products, their success, or their enduring legacy. Oh, Harmon, Harmon, Harmon. This is why I loved your videos. It's so easy to talk about. And and after all of the pain and the Twitter comments and the fucking fighting people on random stuff that probably won't mean anything in like several time, several years, look, Nintendo is a good company. They do make good products, but to say that they're the best... Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's all I have to really say on that. Saying that they're going to continuously grow and continuously, like, push the boundaries, despite the fact that they are probably, like, a decade behind and haven't released uh, a new Switch in, like, 12 years now. Like, how are they on top still? I mean, I agree with, uh, I believe it was uh, the president of Nintendo back in, like, 2006 or seven, where they recently released a um an interview where he said hey the other companies are going to be chasing that high of getting like the next big uh amounts of shit in terms of their uh power and processing power without actually taking the time to realize about the previous gen's power and taking full utilization on it and that's what they as nintendo focus on and that's fine for their niche and that niche just seems to be growing because of the fact that people got burned out of other consoles and stuff that's why i switched to pc for the freedom of it and i agree in some cases there are definitely people who will prioritize nintendo and it's fine for those people absolutely go ahead and buy all the nintendo stuff you want i'm not dissing you about that nintendo's good nintendo's a good solid choice it's just that when people take it to this extreme that's when i get a problem and that's when i see it as the big dumb clown nose that you are currently wearing but that's just my opinion on the topic in any case, I do think that Shadow of the Earth Tree has at least a shot at going for the gold for, um, at le if not game of the year, at least DLC of the year, because that is just the most amount of fun that you could possibly be, and I just think that that would be hilarious for it to win its own award or whatever, but honestly, if it wins game of the year, great for it. It, they, it definitely deserves it, considering the stuff there. But with all that being said, I think that'll about do it for this episode of I Talk About Some Random Stuff That I Found On The Internet Today. My name is GamePangos21. If you want to support me in any other way, shape, or form, links down to everything in the description below. I'm going to be releasing yet another album uh, coming in the next couple of months, so do watch out about that. I'm also going to be possibly hosting, at least next month, hopefully, my own special uh, thing on the Twitch channel. Uh, so you can come on and buy. I'll give you more information on it later. But with all that being said, thanks so much for watching. Again, like, comment, favorite, and subscribe to the thing that all the YouTubers say to do. And a peace. No!